it's uncomfortable to think about our goals and dreams, thinking about our dream career, thinking about our ideal life, thinking about starting our own business, can all be extremely intimidating but also exciting. Before we even hear judgments from other people, we often hear our self doubts first. We stop ourselves from thinking about all the possibilities. We tell ourselves that it is impossible or unrealistic or unfeasible. And when we do start taking action, that's when it gets real uncomfortable. Growing up, I've never had that person who's always in your life telling you that you can be whatever you want to be or you can achieve anything you set out to achieve. I want to be that person that's telling you you can achieve whatever you want to achieve as long as you set out to learn willing to fail, and really focus on bringing value to other people. You really have to believe in your dreams in order to make it happen. And I believe that by taking actions, you will really start to believe in it more and more. It's been a while since my last video with Stephanie and a lot has changed and it's for the better. I've been working very closely with her for the last few weeks to really brainstorm some actions to bring more clarity to her journey. And I thought this process would really benefit a lot of other people as well. I think gaining clarity is definitely one of the hardest part about bringing your dreams into plans. And hopefully we can try to keep this video under 30 minutes. It's been a challenge every time I try to have a conversation with my friends. So let's get to it. I just wanted to say I'm so excited to record our meeting today because I know a lot of people would find whatever you share very helpful. I know you have a lot of exciting projects in mind. So I also want you to share with us a lot about that too. So much has changed in the last few months and you went back to Taiwan to um, get back to your journalism roots and then you came back and now you're back to building your yoga business. So I'm hoping to ask you, what is your mission now? Like how is it different than what you were working on before? And did anything change for you this time around? It was just funny because I was thinking back a year ago exactly i just started my yoga teacher training program oh wow it's one so year anniversary one year yeah a year ago i couldn't have done this i've always wanted to do this for years i just have been busy and i um hadn't re acquired the, the essential skill sets needed to to do this but last year i did uh my uh, yoga teacher training um, program was the first step. It's been crazy. The way I could, I could probably stand out, again, I'm starting, I don't know how this is all going to go. Just create a platform, build a space for people to come and share their mm -hmm. process. And I think using yoga as a language or as a common thread mm -hmm. for this community and use it as a anchor essentially for this community, I think that would be, that would be nice. And I, yeah, I honestly thought it was such a great idea. Um, I know like you sent me over some language of like what you envision it to be. I feel like you really tie together everything and kind of address some of the issues that we talked about too. Um, for example, like we talked about online, how it's online platform and then but yoga is like a community thing and then you were able to solve that problem well you s see that challenge and then turn it into an opportunity because like now that's probably your strength because now you are building that community you mentioned that through working together in the last few weeks it really helped you bring a lot of your ideas together and you gain a little more clarity and I feel like a lot of people like myself I think this is part of the hard, part of the harder part I think the first hard part is actually imagining what our dream life or ideal lifestyle would be and then the second hardest part is like how do we clearly envision it because <laughs> sometimes it's so vague so I guess I wanted you to share more about like why you said that like what made you feel that way a lot of people when we think about 
creation in this process. We are at the beginning of building something from scratch. Our instinct, the first idea, might be that we have to build up from the ground up. But I think what happened, what ended up happening with me is it was a filter out process. Instead of you know trying to learn things on the way、uh, as a build up, I kind of took. A different view at what I know and I can do already, and it's you'd be surprised how much you can do as it is. Listing out everything you can do、it、can be as little as or as big. It just has to be as detailed as you can you can imagine, and then start doing puzzles, piece them together, and filter out things that are good but not、um, helpful or. Uh, effect, effective and build up the parts that it's actually helpful to you. Maybe a lot of people would、um, right. resonate with this. Is that you just have too many options? You can't figure out what it is you want to do. Yeah, that has been the thing, not the problem, but 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 the thing I have been thinking about since the beginning is why I want to do this. I、mm-hmm. couldn't figure it out because there's so many up inputs、mm-hmm. shooting my way, and I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. I ended up doing nothing.、Mm. So I think the process takes it takes some reflection and really an isolation. When I first started, I thought it was going to be point A and point B,、mm-hmm. B being my goal, and point A is where I am, and it's going to be a straight line.、Mm-hmm. It's not a straight line. Life is never a straight line. It's going to be a lot of right, a lot of up and downs and、um, branches and a lot of distractions, and so that's why you need to find kind of a Somewhat straight path between your your where you are and your dream, and kind of just navigate through that. That's the hardest part. Like you have to figure it out first, and then you have to figure out how to do it. Like、mm-hmm. you said, to me, it's a filter out process.、Mm-hmm. Filter out things that it's helpful and things are that are not, and then at the end of it, you're gonna find something that's you.、Mm-hmm. And I that's really a, a process of practicing yoga as well. You kind of Peel off the layers externally one at a time, and then you find what's in the core. Is there like a turning point where you feel like, oh my gosh, everything is falling into place? It really was the moment when you when you brought up, do you want to do this live event together? And I was like, yeah. It I can't quite describe it with words, but something in my belly just just. Just click and light up. It's just as if someone was holding a lighter, and so, there's a bush of you know dry leaves and branches. They're just there, ready, and you kind of just boom, light it in my belly. I cannot describe it better than this. Yeah. The preparation. We need to write a proposal.、Mm-hmm. I've never written、uh, an event proposal before in my entire whole life. I'm a reporter. I'm usually <laughs> on the other end of this. I'm not usually on this end of the of an event. So it was a process, but it gave me a chance to reflect on、mm-hmm. why why I do this and how I want to do it.、Mm-hmm. And this event really brought up. Or bring all the pieces together, or at least to pull out the essential, the, the essential、uh, skill sets or the the aspects that I, I want to build into my own online teaching. I really like that you mentioned how you started from focusing on what you know how to do and what you can offer, and then you build up from there, right? So I've always believed that it's key to keep learning and. You learn, and then you have to take action on it. You can't, because I think my problem before was, I focus a lot on learning, but I don't bring it into action. T- bring it into action is basically practicing. So I learn it, but I don't really practice. So I think to me that's what I've been trying to work on now. So being like not good at like that good at talking on camera, but then just pushing myself to do it. What are some of the things that you kind of surprised yourself? Like you were incapable of a year ago, but then through this journey, now that you're like, wow, I can do all these things. I think being able to do this right here, right now, in this space with the resource that I have, 
is something that surprised me. One of the motivations, I guess, on some level, um, that makes me want to keep doing this is because of this, because of this overwhelming sense of surprise. How, how, how am I this fortunate and lucky to be able to do this? Because a lot of people, especially after COVID, are struggling with jobs. And I went through all of that, but at this point, I'm still able to pursue and build what I want to build. Not a lot of people can say that. So I feel really, really fortunate about it. And then every day I feel like, if I get to do this, I hope I can make something out of this. Not only to you know, sustain myself, but to also make some good of it. Can you tell us three things that you are good at, but you take for granted? And the reason why I'm asking is because I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. And yes, like we are fortunate to be able to do this. It's more like, for, okay, in my point of view, it should be you are able to figure out how to set up your camera, how to mm -hmm. film yourself, and working with all these technology, even though we probably both have some experience with it before, but still, like, we had to learn a lot of things. Like, right now, we're trying to record with all our technologies. And I'm sure. I, I wish I could take a picture <laughs> of the setup right now. No, we will. We'll do like a behind the scene shot at the end. But I think this is, that's where I was trying to get at because you need to give yourself way more credit. I guess another skill like you mentioned that you wanted to learn more about is like how do you take nice pictures by yourself because these are limitations but then these limitations push us to learn new skills okay i'm gonna fly off um top of my head i think um i think the fact that i choose to do it with the resource that i have and i still choose to do it I think that's one thing I took for granted because a lot of, I know people kind of just, it's hard to take the first step. I know because the, oh my God, what is she doing? <laughs> that's in your head. That's in everybody's head. And that's still in my head a lot of time. And no, I'm that's like, only in your head. That's exactly. another thing I wanted to, why I wanted to stop you because exactly. I think it's super cool. You're posting yoga stuff and just like Pamela, like seeing your stories are it inspires other people to be like, damn, what am I doing with my life? Like, I'm not posting any of my work. Okay, some quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go quick. So how would you describe your ideal lifestyle? So the reason for this question is you mentioned, you said, if only I can do this because I'm having so much fun. Can you tell us what it is? I was planning a lot of content for social and I was writing a lot because I like writing long captions to go along with my, especially the educational content. I like the long captions because people took the time to look at my video, give them something additional that they couldn't get from the video. That's my idea. Anyway, I was writing scripts. I was writing, I was planning shots. I was, that's another thing. I always write scripts that I personally don't have the video production capability to do at the moment. It's way beyond my skill set as a video producer, but you know what? I'm going to write it and I'm going to figure it out. But um, yeah, I was doing all of this. I still, I know that there's still a lot of room for me to, to grow, but it was really exciting because I was doing something I know I'm good at and still have room to improve. I think that's really something that excites me. I feel like right now at this point, it is still a really sweet spot where I feel like I have something to give, but I also have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And that's the, wow. the greatest spot. I, I love being in this spot and it's learning about yoga. There you go. The third, the third skills <laughs> that you take for granted is your planning. Or oh, I don't yeah, know. I have meticulous yes you're the one that told me like plan your shots plan your shoots all those things and like you are using your so you're using your strength to get yourself all the way to planning like scripting a video even if your 
like videography skill is not there yet, but I think that's already the first step. So what makes you feel inspired or most like your best self? I was thinking too much into this question again, and then it was so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> it was so obvious to me. It was right after I finished a really, really sweaty and good and, and, and you know, heart pumping vinyasa class. It's always right after. Um, that's why I always keep uh, my journal next to my mat because... Wow, wait, that's a great tip for people. Yeah, journal next to your... or in your proximity. You don't want it to be a distraction, mm -hmm. especially when you're flowing. That's kind of, uh, keep it handy. I've gotten so many ideas. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because, you know, your blood is pumping. Mm -hmm. A lot of blood is actually going in your head and mm -hmm. it's in your entire body. Most of it, it's just... Silly ideas that's, you know, for my own abusement. Uh, others have turned into something that I end up building and it has helped me a lot. Is there anything else in your working process that you get the same flow? When I'm writing, especially writing a script for a video. I think that's really where you thrive as a content creator using like the experience you have in the past. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. I think mm -hmm. that's really where my um, reporter experience and content creating experience overlap. Script writing. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you would do differently if nobody would be judging you? I would ask for more help, especially in the early stage. I feel like I was kind of thinking in my head a little too much. And also because I started um, the, the other job in Taiwan, I didn't have a lot of time to really reach out to people in my other communities. But as soon as I came back, I settled back in and settled down. I started thinking and I reached out and wow, I'm, I've been so uh, amazed by the kind of helps and advice and feedback that I've been getting from all my friends, they have been incredible. I feel like I have been, if I have been growing a little, at least um, content creation production wise, um, in the last couple of weeks or months, it's because of the feedback. I really, really appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting. Because a lot of time it's just a quick decision. Mm -hmm. And but if I don't make that decision, one, I can't move on. And mm -hmm. second, I would just keep thinking about it and it just keep grinding it in my head and I would not make any progress through that. So after many, many, many occasions of that, I decided I said, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> trust my friends. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's actually pretty surprising to hear. It's a very different perspective and I really like that. I agree. It's so hard to ask for help. I honestly don't send my videos to any of my family members. It's just really hard to ask for help. It's so vulnerable. I think most people want to help. It's just exactly. they don't know how. So if mm -hmm. we could be specific and ask for help, then people actually try to help if they can. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it to be uh, to be calculating. I don't want you to be like, okay, so what can I get out of this friend? Right. Friend, and that's really a line that I've been very consciously aware of. I'm like, oh my god, I really don't right. want to make them feel like I'm taking advantage of them. That's probably the one reason why we don't ask for help. Exactly. <laughs> Our Explore Yoga event or this collaboration with TAJCCNC is a really good example of what could happen if we ask for help. Now you are offering him or that organization something that they need and then they're also offering you something that you need and I yeah. think it's a the perfect collaboration Mutual, mutually beneficial yes so excited about that yeah, well and thank you so much for hosting it I have to I just need to I have to cram it in thank you so much for helping me and giving me the idea to do it because otherwise I wouldn't have I don't I I still don't see myself starting this project at that moment in that process. I don't see myself initi initiating it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you did and kind of gave me a push and said, okay, yes, I'm gonna do it because that's what I wanna do. So thank okay. you. I really <laughs> you are oh. welcome. Yay! Well, I think that's it for our quick 
meeting, <laughs> quick <laughs> meeting. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> But I think there was a lot of takeaways, so I'm very excited to share this video. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. And I'm very looking forward to you visiting soon, so、yes. we can put your scripts into action. <laughs> oh my God! Yes. <laughs>